Okay guys, so I'm about to put some insulation in this wall um, and I just want to grab this picture out of the um, BS7671 it's on page 390 and it kind of shows you the reference method for inside walls and ceilings so what we've got here is a stud wall um, with this thermal insulation okay and I'm not clipping my cable direct to the stud I want it to be loose at the moment that's a bit of cat six as a pull cord so I'm going to keep it loose and then I'm going to show you exactly what I'm what I'm looking at let me just try and get this perfect again okay so reference method 100 that's installation methods for flat twin and earth cable clipped direct to a wooden joist or touching the plasterboard ceiling surface. So that's in the ceiling. 101, again, that is in a plasterboard ceiling. So we're actually looking at 102 stud walls. 102, 103. So installation methods for flat twin and earth cable and stud wall with thermal insulation with a minimum U value of 0.1 watt per meter squared K with the cable touching the inner wall surface or touching the plasterboard ceiling surface and what it shows you it shows you with three different positions so your cable is either clipped to the um, joist um, right up to it um, to the plasterboard which I'll show you in a second or it's flat to the back of the plasterboard uh, in front of the insulation or again it's on the other side up, you know clipped against the wall if I was in the middle of the stud or in the middle of the insulation, it would be reference method 103. And that makes a huge difference to the current carrying capacity of the cable. So it says here to look at um, table 4D5, which is on page 409. So if I turn to there, 409, spin this round. Is that still good? Okay. So reference method 102 and 103 in stud walls, that's what we're looking at. So a piece of 2.5 cable in a stud wall with thermal insulation with cable touching the inner wall surface, it comes down to 21 amps. Okay. In a stud wall with thermal insulation with cable not touching the inner wall surface, 13 and a half amps. That is a huge, huge difference. Okay. So when I put this cable in through here, I need to make sure that I'm touching the plasterboard and that way the heat can dissipate away from the cable. The moment that it all gets wrapped up or you know caught in this insulation, I mean you can feel, you know, if you cover that of your hand, you can feel the heat coming off your hand getting trapped in the insulation. Um, and heat obviously is a big killer for our cables. Uh, the more heat there is, um, the current gets excited, it can't travel easily enough. Um, the resistance of the cable starts to go up. And it even gives you a voltage drop per ampere, uh, sorry, voltage drop per ampere per meter here. So for instance, 2.5, we get a voltage drop of 18 milli, um, milliamps per meter. Sorry, yeah, yeah, so sorry, I'll say that again. 18 millivolts per ampere per meter. I'll get it right. Okay, so let's get back to this. And this is the kind of thing that you guys need to look at when you're installing. So I'll come over here, and zoom that out a bit, you can get a better picture of what's going on. So what we've got here is, it's the difference between my cable sitting here, flush up against the plasterboard, okay, to make sure you're doing that, so flush up to the plasterboard, or tight to the, to the stud work in the corners, Cut off a bit of cable, let me show you. So this is a bit of 1.5 just for just for reference. So if my cable was clipped here directly below uh, behind behind the plasterboard, so clipped there, or clipped here in the port tight to the corners. That would be me reference method 103. That would be reference method 103. Oh, sorry, not 103. 102. If it was in the middle of the stud, 
where the insulation is going to be at its thickest. That's reference method 103. And again, if the cable was in the middle of the insulation, so basically running through the centre of this, again, it would be 103. So my plan is that when I do this, my cable is going to be flat to the front of the plasterboard, directly below the socket, so that it's within the, the prescribed zones, the safe zones, and not within the insulation. Okay. The other thing to remember is that this is quite a short distance. So the amount of current that's going to be going through this circuit as well, being a socket circuit, it's going to be very minimal. I mean, the bedrooms, you're probably powering a couple of socks, not socks, powering a couple of clocks, um, bedside light, that kind of thing. There's not going to be a lot of current going through this, this circuit anyway. Um, when you get onto sort of bigger um, accessories, not accessories, bigger appliances like immersion heaters, uh, ovens, cookers, that kind of thing, that's when you want to start thinking about the difference that that's going to make. Celotex is a big killer for our cables, guys, as well. So whenever I'm doing loft conversions, I always make sure that I'm running my cables above the Celotex, uh, not alongside the Celotex. I think I read somewhere once that for every half a metre of Celotex you go through, you need to double the size of your cable. That's how firmly insulating it is. <clears throat> so again, another way of, of avoiding Celotex in loft conversions is to feed the switches. And then all you have then is just a switch wire going up to your lights. And then that keeps the um, keeps that circuit down to a minimum. Okay. Any questions, guys? Obviously, you've got my email address. You can always email in. And uh, I'll speak you soon. Take care.